morning. Kington to Knighton today. My shortest day of the lot. I've just left the accommodation. Uh, so about 14 miles I think it'll be today. And then after that it's going to get a bit tougher. Still some good elevation on the route I think by the looks of it. Um, weather's nice. It's a little bit cooler this morning. Uh, overcast again. So not too hot. Let's go. And look back down into Kington then. Quite a, uh, a tough climb early on there. The poles are out. Oh, it's not too bad. Uh, might be a bit further up. Got my shorts on, so I might get scratched and stung again. <laughs> again, it's a stop to look behind. Kington right down there in the distance. So just a mile in, and we've got Kington Golf Course which according to my guidebook is the highest golf course in England. Once again, just at the top now, Kington Golf Course. Decent views already today, to be fair. It's nice when you get some views early, I think. Um, I'd say yesterday, they didn't really come till the last couple of miles. just headed across these fields, big vast open fields. I'm now uh, climbing Rushuk Hill, I think. But just a quick look back in on the views. Fairly panoramic. There's a little sign up here that says something about Offers Dyke, the enigma of Offers Dyke. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Then I go along here. Offers Dyke dominates the hills northwards in an almost unbroken line as far as Chirk. But going south from Rushuk Hill, you will not find another trace of it for many miles. Only along the eastern edge of the Wye Valley will you again find the line of the continuous earthwork. Why did Offa build the dike? Was it a show of power to his European rivals or a defence against his Welsh enemies? And did it ever reach from sea to sea? There are many theories. What do you think? So it's just dawned on me. This is it. <laughs> So this is a massive part of Offa's Dyke. Um. Got to get a bit of that view. Look deep into nature and you will understand everything better. Nice place for a bench. So that tells you all about Herrick Hill Common. Herrick Hill is what we're going up now at 371 metres at the top then. Pause if you'd like to read the rest. I was wrong. The path doesn't go up there. But don't count the days. Make the days count. Absolutely. And if it means pushing up and climbing a little hill to get these views, then why the hell not? Stunning. I'm glad I took that little detour, even though it's a bit of a brutal climb. <laughs> Perfect, I'm gonna have a drink. So the detour I did up to Herrick Hill there was just straight up and down from the same sort of part. I, I came back down to the same part that I went up from. Uh, there was no obvious drop down the other side and what there would have been probably would have been ridiculously steep. So if you want to take it on, it is something you'd have to go up and down 
it's just an addition to what you were already doing but um, I think it was worth it okay I've dropped down now to the road this is a B road a sign there uh, entering Powys and it looks like I'm going back into Wales so most of the time um, you don't actually know whether you're in England or Wales I know Kington where I was last night was in England and I'm now in Wales so 26 times they say this crosses the border along the route I have no idea how many times I've crossed so far but I am in Wales so heading up into Coed Bertha Wood. So here I think is a much better example of the dike, the ditch, the dike. So I've got a section of ridiculously overgrown path I've had a couple of nettle stings along the way and I imagine there'll be more yet oh this is just ridiculous man and as you've just seen on the gate this is the trail this is the top of what once was the dike but it's not pleasant along this bit not a pleasant section but some nice views from here uh, I think it continues as well up this let's go up this little mound uh, the nettles seem to I shouldn't speak too soon seem to have gone it's not just long grass into grana wood then the uh, symbol of what was once a quarry just off the route here just a little few steps up the chap that I'm following I keep catching him up and then let, letting him pull away I like to walk on my own to be honest especially when I'm filming it um, but he's doing it the proper way he's using a map and a compass I've watched him stopping and looking at his map and compass and uh, getting directions that way and fair play to him uh, I'm cheating, I'm using my watch. I have got maps and compass in the bag, just in case. A tough climb up, but I'm just about to pass that chap. How are we doing? <laughs> Some brutal climbs, aren't they? Brutal Thank you. Days. Yeah, it's yeah. not the easiest. I yeah, yeah. I've been following the Land's End John O'Groats route, so I've come up from Land's End. Uh, I know there's two guys ahead of me, a day ahead of me, and one guy a day behind me. All right, yeah. They're doing exactly the same. All right, oh, fair so, enough. Um, they, they're trying to do it all in the one yeah. I'm splitting it into three. I'm only going as far as night and then. Alright, and then don't know. 400 right. miles, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I'm well, fair play to you. So I'm on the middle high point today. <laughs> Got a big drop down and then a nice big climb up again. I think this up here is Furrow Hill and I think that's where we're heading after Dolly Green so we're just on the way into Dolly Green we're about half a mile away 
and then I think we kind of come back out and up there somewhere. So we've got that to look forward to. <laughs> I think this must be Dolly Old Bridge. Uh, the water doesn't look so great here, it just look a bit deeper as well. <laughs> it's almost green here, isn't it? It's a dark, greeny black colour. Somebody else stopped for a picnic by the looks of it up there with their dog. Dolly Green, then the village of Dolly Green is ahead. There is supposedly a church that has a toilet and a tap if you need it, but, oh it might just be here, I can see the graveyard. But the path goes up this way. Um, and I don't think I need anything that I could get from Dolly Green, so I'm just going to carry on up the path. Let the third climb of the day begin. And it's going to be the toughest. This where I'm stored is that great big tank that you saw in the video a few minutes ago when I was down in the bottom of the valley saying this was where I was heading next. And it's just a little bit off the path. But again, worth that little detour. That's amazing. So the path is just that little line you can see sort of down here, centre centre screen, and it goes off up that way. I'm going through this gate here and up towards these trees so that's going to be the highest point somewhere up there and that's probably when I'm going to have lunch it is quarter past one so it's getting uh, well past lunchtime so the highest point on today's route at 400 meters bang on I'll just stop for a sandwich pretty impressive views once again. The path goes straight on here, but just over this way we've got this memorial stone, so we'll just go and have a look at, at this. So I'll let you pause and read that yourself, but it's a monument to Sir Richard Green Price. First Baronet, 1803 to 1887, whose services to the county of Radnor will long outlive his name. So that just stands alone on the hillside with the crying sheep in the background, if you can hear them. And the road. with another super fast DPD driver flying down it. So I'm just passing this sign on my way, so. And there it is, the path, my path. Ah, look, there I am, here. So, what do we think? Well, it's halfway somewhere here, yeah, somewhere tomorrow, as we go through the Shropshire Hills. Excellent. 
So two miles straight down this road, but we don't go straight down the road because where's the fun in roads? So I didn't go far past, but I've just walked past this uh, field entrance. I thought that sign was pointing this way, but I didn't actually spot the yellow one here. So <laughs> slight detour. Following the dike again. I must be on the Welsh side of it this time. One or two animals in this field. I'm getting a few looks, but they don't seem remotely bothered. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Could that be my first views of Knighton down there? One mile left to go. I think they'll be the last of the views for the day. As we drop down and we're heading past Knighton Golf Course now. So I think we're nearly nice and I can see rooftops through the trees. Houses. Steep drop down now. I've just put my poles away, I probably should have kept them out. Just Still dropping down. Right, I think the office dike centre said it was somewhere near the clock tower and that's over here. Well, I'm not far into it yet, but everything seems a bit like yesterday, all closed up and derelict. So by the quick look of that, there's only really the clock tower to look at. Right, so Knighton is the only tie to lie on Offer's Dyke. It's the midpoint of the trail. I'm not halfway yet, but it's uh, clusters being midway. And it's obviously in Welsh, given the dragon. In Wales, sorry. While I'm here, some commemorative little plaques. And a war memorial. Right, there doesn't seem to be a lot that way. Is there any pubs and things up here? Here to be a bit closed down. The clock tower is obviously up there. There's a sign up here saying Offers Dyke Centre is up this way. So we'll head up this way. Clock Tower. It's like something off a fun fair here, isn't it? Right, the Offers Dyke Centre is here. I don't know if it's open. I don't think it is actually, but I can get my stamp. Oh, it might be, there's some cars here. Let's start with a stamp anyway. All right, we're cracking on with the stamps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two. one, two, three, four, five, six. My maths is great. Halfway there. Okay, I just did a Google search. It said they're closed for refurbishment, open in 2021 when the government says it's safe to do so. So I assume it's somewhere that can't open till the 21st. So that's a shame, but uh, it is what it is. So that's where I go off tomorrow. I'll come back here and go down that way. But for now, I'm heading back into town then and to find Watson's Ale House, which is where I'm staying tonight. Uh, cheap and cheerful at 40 pounds. Right, I'm in. This is my route. Um, 40 pounds can't grumble 
at all. Squeaky floorboards, but I'm sure that's not going to bother me when I'm um, laid in bed. Um, so I might as well make use of this. Uh, a bit grotty, but who cares? So am I. <coughs> so, let me see me. My sweaty head. So that is Kington tonight and done. Um, I ought to stop my tracker. And there is a pub downstairs. Um, pub downstairs, chip shop next door. It's just on there's also a pizza shop up the road and a Chinese. Um, it'll either be the chip shop or the pub for me. That'll be in a bit. Um, I don't think there's much else to see, so I will probably say cheerio for today to you lot, and I'll see you tomorrow. And tomorrow is a longer one, 19 or 20 miles, I think. 19 miles. And from Knighton to Montgomery. So join me for that. Cheerio.